Hello, everyone. Welcome to another fantastic edition of the Cybersecurity Matters podcast. I'm your co-host, Dominic Vogel, and joining me, as always, is my partner in crime, Mr. Christian Redshaw. Christian, how are you doing today, bud? Doing awesome, Dominic. How are you doing? Well, I'm doing okay. <laughs> surviving. <laughs> yeah, surviving. <laughs> Who is our guest today? Well, today we have Terry Cutler from Psyology Labs out of Montreal. And Terry does operational security for small and mid-sized organizations, as well as something called penetration tests. That's so looking forward to uh, chatting with him today. That's awesome. And I'll also tell people right now to do a quick plug for the book, which he'll be talking about. And he actually sent me an autograph version. So um, this might be my retirement plan if it's worth something one day, but we'll see. Uh, anyway, that's fantastic. We'll, we'll uh, loop Terry in uh, momentarily and uh, we'll be right back. Hi, Terry. Welcome to Cybersecurity Matters. Hey, thanks for having me. T Terry, you, you and I have known each other for years, and I think you only first met at a mining conference in Toronto, uh, where you won right. the uh, Popular Speaker <laughs> Award. Oh, the Fleming's um, Conference. Yeah. <laughs> I immediately thought, that guy's really cool. He's a great speaker. I need to become friends with him. <laughs> and then all those years later, you sent me a signed copy of your book, which is absolutely awesome. And I encourage Thank all our, our viewers to, to, to check it out. Uh, but first question, love to learn a bit more about the books or what brought you to the point of wanting to write a, a book uh, to better help our viewers understand who, who you are. Sure. Um, actually, that book is seven years in the making. And to be honest, I had never had an intention to really write a, a book because what was happening is like when it, I do a lot of video content and all of my videos are all pre-scripted. So I know what to say, what not to forget, things like that. And then I could reuse this content for other other things like blogs and other video content and such, but I can also use this content for a book. And I would start the book and then they would sit on my shelf for months and then go back to it. And I'm like, ah, this sucks. Scrap it and start all over again. Right. And then it repeats itself for almost six and a half years. And then, um, my, my, my ghostwriter who I've known, who's been working with me since 2008, uh, he's published several books and he's like, you know what, Terry, we're going to get this book done. I'm going to, I'm going to hold your feet to the fire. We're going to get it done. I'm like, all right, fine. And um, it took about six months uh, to get that book up and running. Wow. And then we did the launch for it and it became an Amazon dollar. And, and not just the paperback, the Kindle was actually fighting for first spot as well. So it was like, it was going back and forth. So it was interesting to see. That's very, very cool, Terry. And, and in, in, in terms of the uh, sort of the, the, I guess the content with, with, within the book, is it meant for technical people? Is it meant for non-technical people? Uh, is it meant for uh, parents and children all alike? Uh, who, who can be benefit the most from, from picking up a copy and, and reading it? This book was made for Mr. and Mrs. Everyone, the general public, the non-technical people. Uh, because I, I've had that comment before, oh, I saw your book, but I'm not into cybersecurity, I don't need it. I'm like, no, no, this book is for you. So you learn how to protect yourself online because I get a lot of calls and emails from from viewers that all oh, my Facebook accounts been hacked or my other accounts been hacked and basic stuff like like two factor authentication it wasn't even turned on. And I'm like, if you're not using 2FA by now, you haven't even entered 2010 yet. <laughs> so these are all basic stuff you got to you got to set up to at least protect your account, right? One of the interesting things that you mentioned as well is about um, USB drives or USB sticks, I should say, that, that are left and that uh, people will, will pick them up and just you know plug them in, into their computer. Uh, do you have a favorite story of, of where, where you've seen uh, or particularly bad story where someone's grabbed a yeah. USB stick somewhere and plugged it in? Uh, the, uh, yeah. Your, sort of uh, something along so that. So I talk about that actually in the book. So it was a story, um, actually IFSEC Global ran the story as well. So the, the story is called the USB keys in the urinal. And it was a story <laughs> about where I got hired by a company to do a, a penetration test on them and I could not get in from the outside. It was very, very uh, impe um, impenetrable. But usually a company that has a very hard shell has a very soft inside. Yeah. So I said, screw it, I'm going over there. So I was dressed casually. I walked into uh, the reception to the receptionist and I said, hey, I feel really, really embarrassed. May, may I please use your bathroom? You know, I, I was a, on a trip with the, the kids, you know, they got the big gulp going and I, I promise it'll never happen again. And luckily she said, make it quick because the bathroom was behind the counter. So she had to buzz me in. And when I was in there, I left two USB keys in the stalls and, and walked out and, and I thanked her and everything. And then about two hours later, a curious employee plugged it in. And uh, at that time, the auto run was, was, was active by default and it auto ran my, uh, my core security tool and uh, I was in. 
I was able to compromise them. It's like a snake coming out of the oh, yeah. toilet, I guess, right? You were able to. Yeah. To, to, to get, to get that, 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 that's a great story. So, so yeah, awesome story, Terry. So our show is called Cybersecurity Matters. In your perspective, can you tell us why cybersecurity matters? Um, right. So, I mean, security, security right now is everyone's responsibility. So it's not about where the, uh, you know, the employee just clicks on whatever you want and, oh, yeah, the, 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 the company's security will, will take over if I make, up, make a mistake. But cybersecurity, is, is, it matters to everyone right now because the, with the new scams and hacks coming out, everybody's, everybody's uh, at risk. So if you want to get yourself protected, you better start learning at least the basics of cybersecurity and how to protect yourself. Mm-hmm. And what are you seeing as the main threats that people need to be protecting themselves from right now? What would you say are your the top biggest one? Say one, two, or yeah, three? Yeah, the biggest one right now is ransomware for sure. Um, at one point, a month or so ago, there was like six calls that came in for an incident response. And because everybody's working from home now, the, the remote employees are not as protected as they are behind their corporate firewalls, right? Yeah, so yeah. so since January of 2020, there's been 445 million cyber attacks against remote users. Wow. And when the when the scams or mm-hmm. sorry, the, the hackers are able to penetrate the home network, a lot of times these companies, these individuals are remoted into the company. And then they can get access to the company and get them infected as well. So those, so ransomware is the biggest one right now. Nobody nobody sees a need for it for, for protection until it's too late. And they don't realize that uh, they can start off losing three hundred thousand dollars to one point two million dollars in a month. It goes very, very fast. It, 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 interesting there when you talk about ransomware, there, Terry, uh, and uh, especially that that sort of reactive versus proactive approach, in which there's still so many yeah. small, mid-sized uh, organizations, uh, you know, the executives or the or the business owners there. And you know, if you try to be proactive with them about cybersecurity, it's like, well, we've never been hit. You know, uh, our IT guys have it right. covered. We're good. But yet. They get hit by ransomware, and then they're calling you. It's like, oh my god, the sky is falling. Uh, is yeah. there anything that that security people can do, or even you know, people on the business side can do, to m- become better aware of the fact that if you take a more of a proactive step, it'll at least help cut down costs <laughs> in the long run? Uh, what are th- some yeah. messages that we, we can start uh, uh, talking about? So I'm trying to change my mindset on that exact topic you're you're bringing up. Um, I, I've I've approached companies. I've even shown them that you're at risk. Yeah. No, no, no. I'm small fish. No one's going to want to hack yeah. me. And the message I've got from other cyber guys, like, you know what? Let them fry. They'll call <laughs> you when it's time. Yeah. And move on to the people that really want to get it secured. Yeah. And and, and um, I get that comment all the time, right? My IT guy, I have an IT guy. I've got it covered. But they don't realize that the IT guy is kind of like your, your, your general family physician. Yeah. Did you ever ask your family mm-hmm. doctor to perform laser eye surgery on you? <laughs> Right, most people would say no. <laughs> so, this is where a, a cybersecurity guy will come in and compliment an IT guy. Yes. So one 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 perfect example, um, an IT guy could be setting up a, a backup strategy, a disaster recovery plan, and probably missed a step because he misconfigured the backup to be on the same network as the main stuff. And the moment they get hit with a ransomware, the backups are getting encrypted as well. So they misconfigured stuff. So this is something the cyber guys would pick up on and tell them how to fix it. That's such that's such a good point, you know, uh, uh, Terry. Yeah. And you know, in, in, that, in that maybe just taking that a step further there about seeing cybersecurity as being the same as IT. Uh, uh, and again, yeah. the I know uh, Christian and I have seen that as well when we when we talk to business owners or you know CEOs, CFOs, uh, they don't see that they have any responsibility when it comes to cybersecurity or even just broader cyber risk management. To them, the IT service provider handles it or the IT guy handles that. Uh, again, very dangerous uh, um, perception to, to, to be able to have. Um, do you think we'll ever get to a point where security isn't just seen as a technical endeavor, that it's something which is basically part of the DNA of the organization? It's going to take a bit of time, uh, a lot of education, but, but I'm seeing that all the time. It's like, oh yeah, my, my overworked and undertrained IT guy is now my cyber guy. And uh, it, it just doesn't work. And, and actually, I, I remember another comment I gave a customer who, who gave me the, the comment, oh, my IT guy's got to cover it. I don't need no audits. I'm like, look, the biggest difference between my service and what you're doing now is you're being tested for free as, as, as we speak. And the only difference with my service, you're going to get a report that shows you where your vulnerabilities are. 
Whereas yeah. the hackers won't give you that. <laughs> so they're just going to get in and take it. So um, it, it's going to require a lot of education to the business, uh, the stakeholders of the company to say that, hey, you need to get serious about cybersecurity. You know, you're going to lose brand, you're going to lose customers, et cetera. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So Terry, taking off from what you were saying about your services and what your services actually are. So your company is called Sciology. Have I pronounced that right? Okay. Yeah, Sciology Lab. Yeah. Awesome. So I understand I'm hearing that you have some kind of forensics capabilities in there for, for after the breach. From what I understand, you also do ongoing monitoring kind of operational side of security as well as I think you're pretty well known for doing penetration tests, as you alluded to. So tell the viewers what you actually do for your clients and what kind of clients that you help. Okay, so my focus right now is on supporting small and medium-sized businesses. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of moving away from the enterprise space because it's very saturated. So I'm focusing on bringing enterprise class quality products and services at a small, medium-sized business price. And um, so we, do, we can go in there with a, what's called a report card audit, where we're going to find all the basic problems that that your IT guy missed. Things like, hey, your employee is still active in the network, but he's been gone from the company for the last three years. Right. Uh, you've got people with too much access. You've got patch management issues. Uh, your firewall isn't blocking content. And the other issue, too, is that their current IT guy isn't providing upper management with with reports onto, hey, here's our risk score. Uh, here's, um, you know, here's attacks we've been having all week. The, these executives are not getting this stuff. So just mm-hmm. so my report can come in and, and complement their IT guy, and it's a very, very, very f- affordable. And then what usually what happens after that is that uh, we find so much stuff that's got to be fixed up. They can bring me in for a bank of hours, uh, upgrade to the monitoring service where we can look at things like, hey. Uh, Dominic usually logs in nine to five. Now he's logging in at 3 a.m. That <laughs> may not be normal. So we get to see all these anomalies. Um, um, we're also a CrowdStrike partner. So we do a lot of incident response, also through partnerships. So we have uh, access to a uh, 24 by 7, 365 SOC, which is based out of, out of North America and out of, uh, the Security Operations Center, for those that don't know. <laughs> right. Security Operations Center, right. And so we get to monitor your, your environment and uh, respond to threats in real time. Okay, and where does the yeah. penetration testing come in for your clients? It, do you usually start out um, with that or is that something that you usually do as they as they mature? I used to start off with that, but then you'd get sticker shock at, <laughs> at the price of some of these audits. Yeah. So that's why I've started off with this report card audit that costs, that actually starts at $1,000. And, and, and it can go to about $2,000 and mm-hmm. you get so much value in there. We even does a dark web scan an external and internal vulnerability assessment. All that's part of the assessment uh, for under 2000 bucks. And there's actually a study that came out that most small businesses don't spend more than a thousand dollars a year on cybersecurity. Mm-hmm. So that is a, that is a very big problem. I want to zero in so, on what you, uh, what you mentioned there. You said something about the dark web scan. For, for yeah. us, we're trying to educate uh, business leaders. Can you tell us what the dark web is and what kind of things you'll find when yeah. you're doing so that the, on behalf so dark of your web, clients? Sure. So the dark web is kind of like a, a little hidden network that can only be ac- accessed through specific software, mm-hmm. right? You can't just use Google and say, hey, find me the bad stuff on the dark web. <laughs> you're not going to get to it. You have to really set up a whole new system. And in there... You know, we can do everything from finding your leaked passwords all the way to hiring an assassin. Right. Okay, you got everything in there. <laughs> so, but we can do a dark web scan to see if your passwords were leaked from a, a from a previous data breach. And a lot of companies or a lot of employees don't change their passwords very frequently. Mm-hmm. So they could be using the same password for the last five years, and because the Marriott, for example, got hacked and all their stuff leaked out, um, their password might be reused. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And this is this is things we need to uh, bring to their attention, definitely. And that gets that gets performed during that audit. Gotcha. Uh, that, that, that's fascinating, Terry. And you know, you, you're talking about you know, focusing on small and mid-sized organizations because they're the ones in the greatest need right now, and it's definitely a, an, yeah. an underserved market. <laughs> and traditionally, it's yeah. been so. Uh, are, do you find certain sectors 
within or, or industry verticals within small mid sized uh, businesses being more receptive to cybersecurity? Or like, like do you find manufacturing as, uh, as an example better than dealing with like small law firms or accounting firms? Which sectors right now are, are, are uh, most open to, to learning about cybersecurity? We're, I'm getting a lot of traction right now from law firms. So we have a, we have a couple of clients that are on our monitoring service right now that are uh, we're monitoring their their law firm. Um, the other one is uh, closely behind is retail. Mm -hmm. So we have some clients that have that have multiple locations. So we have to keep an eye on that. Uh, then the other one would be because um, the majority of them are doing the report card odds right now. So um, we've had we've had uh, we've had auto sector as well. Interesting. So it, it really ranges, you know, yeah. we, have, we have, we do work in Bermuda as well for accounting firms and uh, schools, especially. Hmm. So it's a mix of everything, but we're seeing mostly the law firms Interesting. in the pack right now. Have, have you found in uh, this global pandemic of COVID-19 with this migration towards work from home, has that brought uh, increased awareness for cybersecurity or have you found that it's become maybe less of a priority and that organizations are more focused on just trying to survive the day to day? Very good question. I find that the awareness is actually uh, picked up. Uh, business is actually picked up, but I find it right now they're very slow to, um, to do these audits. They're like, oh yeah, we'll leave it for Q4. Like Q4, like the attackers are happening right now, right? It's, it doesn't make sense. Doesn't help with the so Q3 they're focusing now. on right now is make sure everything's all set up with their VPNs and you know getting production up and running and bringing the money for the business. And they're looking at cyber for the next step. So a lot of our projects got pushed up. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And, and uh, um, my final question, I'm sure Christian probably has one more. Uh, in in terms of what we're seeing, in terms of move, moving forward. Uh, so do you, do you find or are, are you foreseeing that more and more small uh, or, uh, organizations are going to be taking security more seriously? I mean, we're we're still very much just scratching the surface when it comes to small organizations you know, starting to take this seriously. Uh, do you foresee this in terms of that awareness, uh, you know, getting there over the next 10 years, 15 years? Because uh, at least from what we're seeing, it's definitely a slow boil. Um, but it's uh, slow maybe, boil. Maybe, maybe there'll be a, a significant incident which, which uh, propels things forward. But um, just, just curious on your, on your thoughts there in terms of what we're looking at here in terms of the small and mid-sized uh, uh, environment. I'm hoping to speed that up. <laughs> I don't want to wait <laughs> 10, 15 years, right? So, uh, so I, I got a lot of material that I pushed out lately uh, on how to get started with cybersecurity. That's actually how I picked up one of my law firm clients. He saw me at, a, at an event years before and he brings me to the table. He's like, okay, we're ready to get started. So I'm like, what took you so long? <laughs> and it's like, well, we didn't know how to get started. So that actually prompted me to say, you know what? These guys don't know. They don't know how to get started. So I, I educate them on how and why the hackers are getting in uh, based on what their employees are posting online and such. Really, really like steer up the fear. Not so much steer up the fear. It's, it's steer up the reality. Mm -hmm. And say, so, you know what? You can actually get a lot of this stuff fixed with this little audit. Instead of a six or $20,000 penetration test, you can get it done quickly with this audit. And then go for a pen test later on. That's what I. Do that's what have, I've been doing lately. Yeah, that makes sense. So, in in light of that, uh, do you have one more question? What would you advise a company that hasn't gotten started that's delayed? Um, what would you say to them would be their first few steps? What are the What are the ABCs? The very first and second and third thing that you would take a company through? Yeah, I would definitely. The first thing I would do is is is, is get an audit done. So because a lot of times a lot of times they don't even know what's in their environment, um, and because they've never had a test before, never got into cybersecurity, there may already be a hacker in their environment for all we know. So another thing we could probably do is deploy some uh, some EDR tools, which is endpoint detection and response tools, to see if there's something in the environment, right? Make sure it's cleared up. Mm -hmm. um, and after that, we want to make sure that the employees are properly trained. Right, so we we can provide phishing simulators, phishing training, um, you know, get them up to speed, and then we also want to make sure that they, they are at least complying to like the NIST standard or, or or ISO standard to at least get locked down, right? Because they, we know that there's no silver bullet to stop a hacker. The goal is mm -hmm. to make it as hard as possible for them to get in, so they just move on. So right. that's where that's where 
the game is going to be played there, I think. So it's not just about buying a specific cybersecurity technology solution and then that will look no. after your issues. It's it's a little bit deep. No, that's what's happening right now. I get, I get a lot of you know comments from, from the CISO saying, oh, yeah, I have uh, antivirus. I got a firewall and I've got encryption. I'm safe. But they don't realize that once the attacker bypasses this traditional cybersecurity, they have no detection technology in-house to detect that there's a hacker in the environment. And worse, they have no response plan to how to get the hacker out. Right. So, that's, so that's, you're, that's allude, the, you're uh, alluding that's, to having good uh, policies in place, and, and uh, in particular, the uh, incident response policy is is very important. Oh, definitely. Have have a plan. Absolutely, in place. yeah. But we had a, we had a customer just recently that had a, had a um, had an issue. He got hit with ransomware several times, almost once a month. And what happened, what we found out worse was that there was actual live hacker in the environment. Wow. We found that out once the tools were deployed. So they could be in your system six to 18 months prior to being detected and they're out there siphoning out your data. Yeah. So get an audit done, find out what you have and, mm-hmm. and, and start locking stuff down. Because data, data is what is valuable in organization. It's your intangible asset that you want to protect. Absolutely. Yeah, yep. awesome. Well, Terry, so so great to have you on the show today. Thanks so much uh, for joining us. I appreciate it. Wow, uh, Terry is such an interesting uh, person. You know, I mean, first off, I think his, his book is fantastic, and, and for our viewers who haven't had the chance to take a look at it, you can get the hard copy uh, on Amazon or even the, the Kindle version. Uh, fantastic read. It's really well written, again, written in a way that non-technical people can relate to. Uh, plus, I loved his urinal story. I thought that was fantastic. <laughs> if I ever write a book, Dominic, you are going to plug it for me. That's my hope. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I uh, really enjoyed this guy. I bet he's never boring, which is good. It's always good to have a, an exciting guest on the show. And I think the thing that stood out for me the most was just his thought towards prevention rather than, than reaction although he helps companies in reaction mode um, and probably stands to profit from that as well. His uh, position is that he wants to help people before anything bad happens. So I I definitely caught that theme from him. Yeah, I mean, just such an interesting person, like you're saying there. Boy, uh, the stories he could probably tell over a couple of beers, you know, (laughs) be pretty pretty intriguing. You know, we only got a flavor of it just just for 20 minutes there. But uh, what a fantastic guest and uh, couldn't agree more with with your thoughts there. Thank you again, everyone, for taking time of your busy day to join Christian and I uh, on another episode of Cybersecurity Matters. Please make sure to check out the Conversations That Matter YouTube page for previous episodes and other podcasts as well. And for right now, we'll catch you on the flip side and we'll see you next week. 